e-learning with NUT Endo Mother Science School, MENA. <laughs> students at home hi is this here at home and others that are viewing this uh, video I welcome all of you to today's further mathematics class by teacher Muhammad Muhammad Ali Ulafai today we are going to look at a very important topic titled scalars and vectors under scalars and vectors, we are expected to learn the following. One, state the difference between vectors and scalars. Perform simple operation on vectors. Determine the sum and differences of any combination of vectors lying in plane. Resolve a vector into a single direction. Okay, without wasting much of our time, the topic again. Let's start with scalars. When scalars is mentioned to you what comes to your mind already you have learned this in your previous classes in physics but let's go over it again scalars are quantities that have magnitude but no direction so what do we mean when we say magnitude we are talking about size or value of that physical quantity like for example we measure rise in moodles so a moodle of rice is the value attached to that rice. If it costs a thousand naira, so we say the magnitude of that rice is a thousand naira. So we can have quantities having different magnitudes in different units. For example, length is measured in centimeter. We have two kilometers, three kilometers. Now these are magnitudes different from others, telling you the size and value. When we talk about direction, we are talking about references to the four cardinal points, north, south, east, and west. So scalars, like we have said, are very much in physics. We have the first example here, length, area, distance, energy, speed, and density. Now length and distance are very similar in fact we use length to measure small distances whereas when we say distance can be in kilometers can be in anything although length and distances distance are synonymous because they are measured in the same unit only that when we talk about distances we are talking about Sometimes it is applied to long length. Is that okay? Okay, let's proceed. The next one, vectors. Vectors are quantities that have both magnitude and direction. Examples are displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum. Now, anytime we talk about this, we make references to the direction with which they are going. If teacher Muhammad covers a distance of 10 kilometer from NUT and Dual Model Science School to City Gate in the north direction, and coming back, he covers the same distance of 10 kilometer in the south direction. His total displacement will be plus 10 minus 10, which is equal to zero. Why is it plus 10? Because going south is a positive direction, and coming to the north is an opposite direction so when we have plus minus it will now be equal to zero so plus 10 minus 10 that is zero but when you ask teacher Muhammad what will, what is his total distance the total distance will be 10 plus 10 because distance does not make any reference to direction I hope that is clear so what we are talking about here all these quantities mentioned here are quantities that make uh, quantities 
that whenever you are doing simple operations on them, their directions must be considered, not only magnitude. Are we clear? Thank you. Let's take an example. Vectors which do not have any particular position associated with them are called free vectors. For example, all the examples I mentioned in the previous slide are examples of free vectors because when a man moves with a velocity of 5 meters per second, that is a free vector because the direction is not stated. So when the direction of a vector is not stated, we will say that vector is a free vector. But look at this case here. If you look at this case here, you will notice that there is a movement from point A to point B. And this point A to point B, this point A to point B, is the distance between point A to point B is 50 kilometers. Now, but this person in point A moves with a di direction of 45 degrees. So we can say this is not 45 degree east. So with reference to the direction, this person covers a displacement of 50 kilometers north, 45 degree east. 50 kilometers north, 45 degree east. And this is how to represent this type of vectors. Are we clear? Okay, now let's proceed. There are certain terms associated with vectors. The first one is notation. What is a notation? We are just talking about a way in which vectors are presented. Firstly, in printed work form, uh, bolding a vector is just enough to show that this is a vector. But when you are writing, all you need to do is to underline. That shows that this is a vector. So for example, vector A is printed in bolded form here. Can you see that? Yes. Whereas vector A is on the line here, it is in work. The next one, magnitude. The magnitude of a vector A, sometimes called the modulus of the vector, is represented by A. Now, these symbols, these two slash with the vector in between, is what is referred to as the modulus of vector A. And he's talking about the magnitude of vector A. That is the value of A. The zero vector or null vector is a vector whose magnitude is equal to zero or whose modulus is equal to zero and it is represented by zero. The unit vector. The unit vector in the direction of the vector A is the vector represented by A such that A is the modulus of A or in printed work you bold it A. The negative vector is a vector in which the direction of the original vector is opposite to the direction of the original vector. For example, the negative vector of vector A is minus A. This is because minus A have the same magnitude with A but different direction. So a negative vector of A is a vector with the same magnitude with A, but different direction with A. So the negative vector of A is minus A. Equality of vectors. Two vectors, A and B, are said to be equal if they have the same magnitude and direction. Are we clear? So let's proceed. Addition and subtraction of vectors. Now let's look at this shape. Can you see? This is a triangle, A, B, C. Now, the journey from point A here to point C can be achieved in two ways. Now, the first way is to travel from point A to point B and from point B to point C. Or, I can journey from point A to point C directly. Now, if I move from point A to point C, it is easier to cover. I will say from A, A to C will have the same effect of 
moving from point A to point B and to point C using vector formats. So in this case, we will refer to as AC. Can you see the representation of vector here using arrows? This indicates the direction of the vectors. Now, can I now say that AC has the same effect of AB and BC? Yes. So we call this AC the resultant of vector AB and BC. Let's look at it more closely. Now, if we have this moving from point A to C, we say it's the same thing as saying A plus AB plus BC. Can we have it here? Because AC has the same effect with the two as the two original vectors. So in this case, if we represent AB by P and BC by Q, we'll have something like this. Then AC will be equal to P plus Q. So the law AC equal to AB plus BC is called the triangular law of vectors. According to the triangular law of vectors, the hypotenuse or the longest side of a triangle is the resultant or a single vector which will have the same effect in magnitude and direction as the two forces of vectors acting together. Remember, force is also a vector quantity. Now, the vector AC or P plus Q is referred to as the resultant vector. Are we clear? Okay, that's good. Let's proceed now. More on triangular law of vectors. The triangular of law of vectors is used to find the resultant of vectors moving in a straight line. Now, to find the resultant, PR. Now, remember I told you in the previous slide that PR, the longest side of a triangle, represents the resultant. And since PR is the resultant, can we now say Q, PQ, and QR will sum up together to give you PR? What's the reason? Triangular law of vectors. So we have it here, QR plus PQ is equal to PR. And PR will be equal to A plus B. See it in bold form. This is because PQ is A, QR is B. Same thing here, QS plus QP. Look at it here. But here we have QS equal to minus B. So we have it here. So in a nutshell, PS will be equal to A minus B because B is the negative vector of vector B. So we can categorically say that when we have two vectors moving on a straight line in the same direction, the resultant vector will be adding the vectors together. For example, if I have vector A and vector B moving in a straight line in the same direction, the resultant vector will be A plus B. If you have A minus A and B in the opposite direction on a straight line, the resultant vector will be A minus B. Are we there? Thank you. Parallelogram law of vectors. It states that the resultant of two vectors is represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram whose adjacent side are the two vectors. Now, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with no line of symmetry. It has opposite side, equal, and parallel. Let's take this example for us to understand what we are trying to see better. In this example, it, say, it says shows that, show that if A and B are two vectors, then A plus B is equal to B plus A. Now, what we have here is a parallelogram. Assuming these two sides, the adjacent side, are represented by A and B. Now, we can have this diagram like this because remember a parallelogram has opposite side, equal, and parallel. Since opposite sides are equal and parallel, uh, we can draw this shape like this, this side equal to this side, and B equal to the other, other side. So we can say AB equal to CD, AC equal to BD. Are we clear? So from triangular law of vectors, AD, which is the diagonal, the diagonal is a line that 
start from one point of the parallelogram to the opposite corner of the same parallelogram. So we have AD equal to AB plus BD. So an AB is equal to A, BD is A, and AB is B. So when you add it together, we we'll have B plus A. Are we clear? And AD, which is the diagonal, is also equal to AC plus CD. Remember this divides the parallelogram into two triangles. And AD will be equal to AC plus CD, just, just the way we have. And that will be equal to A plus B. Since AD is just one single line, we we'll say AB is also equal to A plus B is equal to B plus A. Proving. So this law is called the commutative law of vector addition. A plus B equal to B plus A. Thank you. Example 2. If A, B, and C are three vectors, show that bracket A plus B plus C equals A plus bracket B plus C. What are we going to do? What we will do is to draw What are you going to do is to draw these three vectors. So the first thing we have is, this is A, let's draw B, this is B, and the last one C. You have to construct it in such a way that to give you opportunity to create triangles between them. So here, if I want to get the resultant of A and B, Following the triangular law of vectors, I will just create another triangle here. So should we go? Yeah. And the resultant will give me A plus B. If you look at these two vectors, if I want to get the resultant, I will just get another one here. And this will give me B plus C. Now, that is not all. I can also, between B plus C, and A creates another triangle. And this will give me A plus B plus C. And another one here, this will give me A plus B, bracket A plus B plus C. And since this line is just single, and the same line is A plus bracket A plus B plus C, we'll say and it's also A plus bracket B plus C. We can say categorically that A plus B is equal to A plus bracket A plus B plus C is equal to A plus bracket B plus C. Are we clear? So can we take this one home? Let's do this at home. Given that, given the unit vectors P, Q, R, use the triangular law of vectors to show the resultant of the following. P plus Q, Q plus R, P plus bracket Q plus R, bracket P plus Q plus R. Thank you very much.